What's up everyone on the internet? Thank you for making this video party. I'm so excited to upload this one for you guys because this video we'll be taking a look at an anime movie that pretty much serves as the standard film for anyone who's just starting to get into anime. And that would be your name. Which is funny because as someone who's been watching anime for more than a few years now, I've never had the chance to watch this movie. But as it turns out, when my sister was just starting to get into anime, I felt that this was a movie that we should both watch together. So just like Weathering With You, we both decided to watch this movie as a sort of brother-sister movie night. So anyway, this movie came out back in 2016 and tells the story of a small town girl switching bodies with a city boy. And once I heard about the premise of this film, I was like, Oh crap, it's Freaky Friday! Now one of the things that I really loved about this film is how the story hits the ground running where it already throws you right in the middle of things as you can clearly tell that our two main characters have switched bodies. Also, speaking of which, let's talk about these two kids. For starters, the audience is first introduced to Mito, who is a high school girl living in a small rural town in the countryside of Japan. That is until she wakes up in Taki's body, who is a high school boy living right in the middle of Tokyo. And the same thing happens to Taki who freaks out when he realizes that he woke up in a girl's body before assessing the situation. Okay, to be fair, I think most high school boys would have done the same thing if they woke up inside a girl's body. But anyway, throughout the first act of the film, we see these two kids learn how to communicate with one another as they begin to establish some ground rules for what they can and can't do with their bodies. And let me tell you, watching both Mitsuha and Taki get into all kinds of shenanigans with their new bodies is pretty funny because it's the sort of thing you would expect from high school teenagers. Now, while it's fun watching these two get into all kinds of trouble, it's not until when we get to the second act of the film where we begin to uncover the truth behind this whole dilemma. And as we move further into the story, that is when we begin to see these two characters start to realize that they actually have feelings for one another to the point where they need to meet each other in person. That is until this movie has its sixth sense moment as it throws one of the biggest plot twists I've ever seen in anime. Without giving too many spoilers, I will say the scene leading up to the big reveal is pretty much setting you up for shock and awe as you see how these kids are so close and yet so far away. Which leads us to the third act of the film, which raises the stakes as we are now on a time limit to where everything has to be done as fast as possible. Now even though the story begins to speed up and pick up the pace, the movie still has time to fit in a very emotional moment between these two characters right before the climax of the film, as it really does show you how deeply in love these two kids are. And in the blink of an eye, the moment ends, and I remember the room being dead quiet after my mom gave one of the biggest gasps in her life when she saw this heartwarming moment come to an abrupt end, which then becomes a race against time as the film puts you on the edge of your seat during the story's big climax. And once things start to settle down, that is where the story begins to tease the audience with the fate of these two characters. Now while I enjoy the ending, I will say that I do have one little thing to nitpick and it will be how the movie handles with the severing the connection between Mitsuo and Taki's whole body switching dilemma. Now I can understand why the film decided to go this route as it does make the final reunion more sentimental. But let's be honest, the ending would have been a lot better if there was still some sort of connection between these two kids which then leads them to go looking for one another and then having a far more emotional reunion than what we saw in the film. But like I said, despite that little nitpick, I was still very satisfied with how the movie ended. So overall, I really enjoyed watching this film as it plays with the idea of having a Freaky Friday scenario play with just a small town girl and a city boy. Wait, wait, hold up, hold up, holy crap! Oh my god! I just realized something. This whole movie is the embodiment of Journey's number one song, Don't Stop Believing. Don't stop believing. Now that I think about it, the movie plays out similar to what can be heard in the song as it focuses on a small town girl living in a lonely world and a city boy living in Tokyo. To make things even more crazy, there are strangers walking up and down the boulevard as they take a train going anywhere. That may be stretching it a bit, but somehow this feels very familiar. Now I know Hollywood plans on making an American live action version of this film, which will probably be bad, but I can guarantee you they're going to play Don't Stop Believing at the end of the movie. But anyway, going back to the anime, I really enjoyed watching this movie and what made the experience even better was watching it with my sister who started taking an interest in anime films. So if you're interested in watching an anime version of Freaky Friday with a romantic twist to it, I highly recommend you watch this movie. Well that's going to do it for this video guys, that was my overall review for your name. If you like what you saw, click the subscribe button so you can get all these updates from this channel. I'll see you next time with a brand new video. Bye bye.